Hi friends, welcome back to Codeligent. In the previous videos, we have seen two collections which were lists and tuples. In this video, we will see another interesting collection which is dictionary. So let's get started. So dictionary is a mutable collection, but it acts like a key value pair storage. Till now we have seen list and tuples wherein we can store a collection of values but in this we will have to store it like a key value pair so there will be a key and there will be a value associated with that and it's a mutable collection that means you can add edit or remove items from this collection duplicate values are allowed but duplicate keys are not allowed the keys should be unique and Till Python 3.6, it was an unordered collection. That means whenever you are storing it, there was no guarantee that whether in the memory it will be stored in that order itself. But from Python 3.7 onwards, Python made sure that it will preserve the insertion order. So that means if you are inserting one, two, three, four, like that, uh, the keys in that order itself, it will get stored. So it will maintain that insertion order. And there are many inbuilt methods available for dictionaries like items, keys, values, clear, copy and many more. Uh, we will get into that details when we do the demo code. So now we are in our ID Visual Studio code and I have just created one empty py file. So now we will create a simple dictionary. So I will name it as dict1, maybe a dictionary1. We have to start curly braces. And we have to do a key value pair. So for example, I'll say one and I will give apple. So two, maybe banana. Three, it will be a mango. So you can see there is a key, colon, and there is a value. And again, again, key, colon, value. So this will be a key value pair which we are storing. So now, if I say print of type of dict1. So let's execute this and see what happens. So to execute, I'll say pi dictionary.py. And you can see it shows that it's a dictionary class type object. So this is a dictionary. And anytime you want to retrieve the element, you can retrieve it based on the key. So anytime I can say dict1 square brackets and I can pass any of the keys. So for example, I pass two and if I execute this, you can see it prints banana. So it just goes into the dictionary. It looks for the key two and whatever is the associated value, it returns that. So this is how you, you work with a dictionary. And it's not mandatory that key should be of the same type or value should be of same type or the key should be of int type only. It can be anything. It can be a mix. So let's see that. So let me remove this dictionary. And now I'll create, for example, a first one as name. It's a key and I'll give the value as maybe Alex. Now I'll create maybe location and location I'll give maybe like Germany and maybe next I'll give interests and I'll give the value as a list. So I'll say photography coding and maybe hiking maybe phone and this will be a number so for example uh, 4923234 two, so this imagine this is a number so it can be saved like this so ideally there will be a isd code so we should start with plus but maybe just for an example i'm giving it because you can store the value as int and you can keep the key as string as well and in case you want to use a key as an integer and give some value maybe abc so this is also possible so now you can see you have a key with type string 
you have a key with type int you can even have a key with maybe a tuple so for example i'll say latitude comma longitude and its value again a tuple i'll say 23.4 comma 45.34 something like this so now you can see it's a jumbled up data so it's like you have an string type key you have a int type key you have a tuple type key and in values you have a string value you have a int value you have a list value you have a tuple value so one thing which you need to remember in dictionary except for list and dictionary anything can be a key so this is an important point that a list type and a dictionary type can never be a key for a dictionary apart from that any of the data types which are available can be a dictionary's key so this is important which you can remember so now for example here you can retrieve the data also however you want or if you just want to print a dictionary maybe i'll just let me print the dictionary first so you can see the whole dictionary has been printed and now if you want to extract anything like for example you want to extract only the phone so now dictionary of phone when you print let me clear this and you get the value and similar to that you can get from the tuple as well so for that maybe i'll remove this you can see in the intellisense also it gives all the keys if you're working with visual studio code so you can anytime go to this particular key and you can just print that so you can see you can retrieve that so this is how a dictionary works so now uh, let's make it little simple to work further uh, maybe i'll remove this much part and let's keep it till here so now you have a good dictionary and you were till now retrieving with square brackets apart from that you can do in a different way as well so you can say dictionary one dot get and you can pass the key in this as well so for example if i pass interests so let me execute this and you get the value so why you need this because if you are accessing with get or maybe with your square brackets what if the key doesn't exist so for example if i say get of abc so there is no such key which exists in this dictionary so if i execute that you get none but this get method provides you another option wherein you can say if the key is not found i want to share a default value so for example i am asking get city so for example i'm saying from this dictionary i want to get the value of the city but city doesn't exist so in this case you can pass a default value as well so i will say munich so now whenever we are working with dictionary and whenever you are trying to get this key if the key is found it will return that value if it is not found then this default value will be passed so if i execute this you can say munich instead of none so in this example it might not feel that it is really useful but when you are working with a big code wherein the dictionary has been getting created dynamically and you are fetching something on the fly and you don't know how the values or how the keys inside the dictionaries will be inserted it's done on a runtime basis in that case there might be a scenario wherein you are looking for some key and that key has not been inserted in the dictionary till now so in such cases this get with a default value will be a lot of help now during coding you can do some check as well for the keys so for example you want to get a city and you don't want any default value so now if you do this so as you have seen before you get a none but before doing this you can do a check so for example if you can say city 
in dict1 so now you are checking whether this particular key exists in this dictionary or not if it exists then only you do this else just print not found so you can say just clear this and you can see now it says not found so you can always use anything any of the key type like maybe it can be a string it can be an int and you can check whether this exists in this dictionary or not and similar to that you can do a negate as well if city not in dictionary then like that also you can use so it will check whether city is not there in dictionary so in this case when you execute it will be reverse now you goes inside and it tries to find that and returns a none so you can use in as well as you can use not in so now what if you want to extract all the items so for that you can use an inbuilt method like dict one dot items so this returns you all the pairs so that means all the key value pairs it returns so if you just do a for loop on this for example i am doing for i in dict one i dot items and here i want to print i which is now a tuple type you can see it's a tuple type so whatever is the items it will bring every key value pair in a tuple so now i can extract this by saying i of zero i can say comma i of one so now if i execute this you can see you get all the pairs one by one you can do it even more simpler for this for example you instead of one variable you can use two variables so i will say for x comma so for the x comma y and here i can simply use x comma y so now this is smart enough to understand that whenever you are looping in this every item since it is a key value pair it's a tuple and it will bring and put it into these variables so the first the key will be put into this x and the value will be put into y so now if you print this you can see you get the same output so in this but you get the benefit of handling the keys individually and value individually without using any indexing and all so this is another way of extracting that and what if you want to extract only the keys or only the values even that is available so if you say for example i just do a print instead of looping i'll say dict one dot keys so this keys method will give you all the keys so if i clear this and you can see dict keys name location interest phone so you can loop in this as well so that you will be looping only in the keys similar to that you have another method called values so if you execute this you get dict values of only the values so you can see it's of type dict values and dict keys so this is usually an iteratable type so anytime you can do a for loop and loop through this only keys or only values now what if you want to delete some item from the dictionary so for that you have something called pop so dict one dot pop and you can pass the key so for example i want to remove location from this and now i'll just print dict1 so let's see what happens so now you see in this dictionary location doesn't exist so that had has been removed from because of this pop and just in case you want to delete all the items from the dictionary for that you have a method called clear so you can just say clear and now if you execute you will get an empty dictionary because all the items which are there in the dictionary has been removed
So these are two methods which you can use whenever you want to delete or clear off the complete dictionary. And you can very well nest dictionaries as well. So for example, this is the dictionary and in this I can do something like kids which will be the key and value will be again a dictionary. So I will start again a curly brace wherein I can say maybe Thomas which is who is having an age of uh, maybe int type maybe 12 years old and I can have Anna who is maybe 9 year old. So now in this you can see this is a dictionary in which you have a kids key in which you have again one more dictionary. So this is the nesting of dictionaries. So now if I say dict one dot get of kids and just remove this and you can see this dictionary has been printed. So like this you can make the dictionary even more complex. You can mix dictionary inside dictionary. You can use tuples inside a dictionary. You can use lists inside a dictionary. So all these combinations are possible. And if what if you want to insert new item inside the dictionary. So now you have created the connection dictionary. Maybe you want to now add one more key value pair. So for that it's very simple. You can say dict1 square brackets how you are retrieving that and in this you can pass for example pin code and now you can say equal to and give the value one two three four five six so now what it happens you are saying dict one of pin code which doesn't exist in this collection and you are assigning a value so now let's see what happens I'll clear this off and now you can see a new entry of this pin code has been added in the dictionary. So since this key didn't exist here, it made an entry and what if I give a particular key which already exists and I will say the name as maybe John. So now if I execute this you can see the name has been updated to John. So whenever you are referring to some key with the square brackets and assigning a value if that key already exists in the dictionary it will overwrite the value of that. If it doesn't exist it will just add that as a new key value pair into the dictionary. So that is how you can insert new items insert the dictionary. So hope the topic of dictionary is clear and you know when to use this collection and how to use this collection. Thank you.